Jesus' parents, Mary and Joseph, were already engaged, um, but before their engagement, Mary was pregnant. Joseph was going to divorce her quietly, but then received a vision from God that told him Mary got the child through the Holy Spirit and that he would be called Emmanuel, which means God with us. So they traveled to Bethlehem for a census. Although the, all the hotels were full, so they, so they slept in a stable. Jesus was then born in a manger. Some shepherds were told by angels that the Messiah had been born in Bethlehem. And all they, although they seemed lower class people to the Romans, they were the first to see baby Jesus. Some wise men saw a star shining on baby Jesus, and although it took many months, they finally came to King Herod. Then King Herod said, Bring me the child so that I may worship him too, but his real intentions were to kill him. On their way to baby Jesus, the wise men came with gold, frankincense, and myrrh. On their way back to where they came from, they were told in a vision by God not to go back to King Herod. As Jesus grew older, he did miracles and taught of heaven and eternal life. He walked on water, healed the sick, and even raised the dead. John 3, 16 to 17 says, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him shall not perish, but have everlasting life. For God did not come into the world to condemn the world, but to save the world through him. At the Passover festival, Jesus broke bread and said, This is my body, which is broken for you. And then poured the wine and said, This is my blood, which is poured out for you. He then announced that Judas Iscariot, one of his own twelve disciples, was a traitor. The, Jesus then went to the Sea of Galilee where he prayed to God about his death. When he came back, his disciples were asleep. They awoke. Judas Iscariot said to the soldiers, the man that I kiss is Jesus, and kissed him on the cheek. Just imagine, the most villainous act in all of history was a kiss. The way that we show love, murder, Messiah. After that, Jesus was beaten so badly he was unrecognizable when he went to the cross. The, the whips that they used scarred him till he died and even, even when he resurrected. They put a crown of thorns on his head and nailed his hands and feet to the cross. He then died. He rose three days later and descended into heaven 40 days later. Jesus didn't just impact society by making a new way of life. He changed my life. I, I um, have been baptized no more than half the Bible, and I felt him living in me. I cried not from depression or rage, but from him living in me. I couldn't even move. Jesus Christ saved me and can save you too if you believe. On that great day will he say to you, Well done, my good and faithful servant. Within you I am well pleased. Or will he say to you, Depart from me, I never knew you. Will you be will you die twice in the flesh and spirit and be born once in the flesh? Or you die once in the flesh and be born twice in spirit and flesh? There are two gates, the broad gate that everyone follows that leads to hell and destruction and death. Or will you go through the narrow gate, which has many trials and tribulations, but leads to eternal life and being in the presence of God? So you might think that since the greatest act in all of history, I mean the most villainous act in all of history is a kiss, that the greatest would be death, but no. The greatest act in all of history is Jesus Christ conquering death. So once again, there are many names for our Messiah, but the greatest is Jesus Christ. Amen.